Hello and welcome to this tutorial for origami design. We're going to go over the toolbar and scrubber widget in this tutorial. Uh, the toolbar and scrubber are uh, navigational features in origami engine. Um, they basically consist of a bar at the top of the screen that's accessible through gestures or other means. Um, that gives you the ability to add uh, functionality, buttons, features uh, into that bar. And then above that, a larger area uh, that works very similar to a table of contents or a navigational device where you can uh, move right and left and scroll between the uh, different page thumbnails and get some information about the page, the page title, page description, page number, etc. So, we're going to build one of these. Um, the way that you build them is by uh, adding a widget to the stage in origami design. So we've created a page here. Uh, it's a simple one page document. Uh, for demonstration purposes we've also added the title and subtitle which will then appear in the scrubber. Um, the scrubber and the toolbar are widgets. And widgets are, are special uh, features and functionality that are in a single package that you can deliver to a page to add some extraordinary behavior or feature to your document or to your application. So we're going to click on our widget panel here. The widget panel by default will be empty. In the top left corner there is a little plus icon. You can click that and then you'll see the widgets that are available to you. So we're interested in the scrubber and the toolbar widget, so we'll add both of them to the stage. Uh, you can rename them if you want to. Uh, by default, they'll have their standard name. So when we do that, that does not mean that they're going to be in your document. It just means that you've now added, added them to your widget list and you have the potential to add them to your different pages. So you can add widgets uh, in two different ways to your page. Um, first, you add them actually to the page. Uh, in this case the scrubber and the toolbar uh, can only be added to the top of the page so they'll automatically snap to that. Um, but this, the two ways you can have uh, widgets on a page is you can have them either as a universal widget which means that they will appear that way on every single page in that style, in that functionality, in that location. And if you edit it in one place, then it will change everywhere else. And then you have unique, where that widget will be unique for every single page. So if you edit a widget in the widget list, um, then that will make changes to all of the instances in your document. If you add, uh, if you edit it on the page, then it will only change into that specific instance. So the way that you go in and actually edit these uh, widgets, the toolbar and the scrubber, is by double clicking on them. So I'm going to click on, double click on the toolbar widget to start with. You can have a toolbar widget without a scrubber widget and vice versa. You do not have to use both of them. So it's similar to a page in that you have uh, a working area that's visible here on the stage. Um, you'll notice that when you double click on it, a tab will appear with green text in it. That tab uh, with the green text denotes that it's uh, a widget that you're editing now, not a page or an overview or a scrollable box. And in the inspector, we have behavior and gestures. So the behavior is how the uh, toolbar will appear on the screen um, and the gesture is how you, what kind of gestures or behaviors you use to actually be able to do that. Um, so in our case we're going to set it to a two finger gesture. Um, you can also do a one finger off the top of the page gesture. You can double tap the screen and you can do a one finger across the whole screen um, gesture. We want two fingers. Uh, the one finger across the whole screen, this is a particularly odd gesture. It's designed specifically for children's books and kiosks because it's not a gesture that you would, uh, a person would normally do uh, by accident. So you'd actually have to know the gesture and to actively do it in order to get access to the toolbar. So we have our drawer, that's what we want to use, and we have our two fingers down. Now we want to add some assets and functionality to the toolbar. So we've already preloaded all of our assets here um, in our asset list. 
and we're going to add them here. So you can add, uh, in this case we're adding a background, you can add one for Retina and you can also add it for iPad 1, 2 and Mini. Uh, if you don't want to, you can only you can also just add Retina assets like we're going to um, and then Origami Design will automatically downsize everything for you when it exports. So we've added our background, now we need to add some buttons to this um, toolbar. So you access the buttons through the insert button. Uh, down at the bottom we have button bar button, click on that and it will insert these into the top left corner. So the buttons have two components to them. One is a graphic and the other is text. They're linked to one another so make sure they stay close together. Um, you do not add a graphic the same way uh, you would on a regular page when you're working in this particular widget. What you do is you click on settings and then you have your icon and your icon over. Um, we're going to add an icon for our bookshelf at the retina resolution and we're going to add uh, an icon over at the retina resolution. Over means the activated state. It's either when your finger is touching it or if it's been activated. So for example, um, we're going to now add a um, search button. So we're going to move that over so that they're not uh, confused with one another. And uh, with regards to a search button, when you want, uh, when you click on it, then you want it to be activated when the search dialog box is activated. Um, so that's what the icon over state is going to do. So we're going to add our retina asset here and then we're going to add our retina over asset. As you see when you add these assets then they will automatically update on the stage. So here you can also use guides um, to line things up the same way you do on a regular page. Um, when you click on the text boxes you'll get a text dialog with text information. Um, not a lot of text control but everything that you need. Um, for a single word or a single statement. We want to match up these colors to these icons. Okay, we've done that now. We'll set the font. And now line these things up so that they're lined up the way that they should. So this is going to the bookshelf and this will be search. So there is no um, predefined functionality for each of these buttons. Any button can be anything and the way that you set the functionality for the button is through the trigger tab up here um, when you click on the graphic. So we have settings and we have triggers. So we're going to set this one to be a bookshelf. So we'll add it and we have functions. And we'll scroll down to bookshelf so now when you click on it, it will jump out to the bookshelf in the same way that a regular on-screen uh, trigger will jump out to the bookshelf. And likewise um, with search. So in this case we have a little bit more control um, because with search we can show, hide, or toggle. And in this case the default behavior is going to be toggle. So when you click on it, the search dialog will appear. When you click on it again, the search dialog will disappear. We now have finished our toolbar. We can close that and we can double click on our scrubber. So the default state of the scrubber, um, it will appear with three different text boxes up in the top or left corner. First text box is the page number, so it will automatically display, display the page number that you're on. Second is the page description, so it will automatically display the page description. And finally, the page title. These can be laid out any way and anywhere you want them to be laid out. Uh, when you start adding the assets for the scrubber, it will put them in the default positioning. Uh, that doesn't mean that they have to stay there. You can move them wherever you need to move them. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the info area. And the info area is here. So we'll add it to the top there. Um, again, you can move it around, you can adjust it, you can put it wherever you see fit. Um, it's a transparent PNG so you can add any type of graphic you want. And uh, finally we will add our 
a scroll bar, which will place itself at the bottom, and then we will add the scroll bar button. So you'll notice the scroll bar button is a little bit off, so we need to move that down so that it lines up correctly. Then we're going to set our typography. So these three uh, type boxes are dynamic. Um, so we want to set up the graphics, uh, or set up the colors, and set up the type. Increase the size a little bit, and then take these two and increase the size considerably. So make sure that when you uh, create these text boxes that you create them big enough to handle any possible page title in your document. Um, if the page title or page description is bigger than the, the text box, then it will just cut off that text um, and you won't see the text uh, in the interface. So you can use um, the embedded fonts, kerning, tracking, leading, color, render options, um, hang punctuation, vertical, and justification. Um, so you have a lot of typographic control um, that you would need to be able to lay this part of the interface out however you see fit. We're going to set this to 40% transparent. Um, and now we've set up our scrubber. So page area, you see here, this is going to show me, uh, this is going to set the page area here where um, horizontally all the page thumbnails are going to be. We're going to set this to a light gray and then we're going to close that. So we've now created our scrubber and we've created our toolbar. So let's go and preview this in the um, origami view. So I'm going to open origami view and then I'm going to click on preview. I'm going to jump to that. So now we're in origami view and it will export it and transfer it wirelessly. I'm going to then click on it and we now have our page and I'm going to use the two fingers down gesture. You can see that it just slid out like a drawer like we defined. Um, I can then click on search and I get my search dialog. I can click on the bookshelf and jump back to the bookshelf. Uh, go back into my document and I have my scrubber here at the top and I can control it as I need to control it. So that's the basics for a uh, toolbar and scrubber. You can set it up and design it as you see fit. Uh, we highly recommend that when you do this you um, take into consideration that your users are going to expect this behavior to be consistent across multiple documents so try and keep it as consistent as you possibly can. Um, otherwise, um, you're very free to, to solve the navigational problems as you, as you need to. Um, so in addition to this, uh, a couple of notes. One, uh, when we set the toolbar and scrubber, we set it just now to having a gesture. Uh, you can also open the toolbar and scrubber via a uh, trigger on the screen. So for example, if you want to have a button that says open toolbar or navigate or view content, um, then you would set the action to function open toolbar, open scrubber. So finally, um, what I want to cover is some production methods uh, for not using a toolbar and a scrubber. So often when you're sketching in origami design and you just want to test something out very quick, you don't want to go through the entire process of creating a toolbar and a scrubber. So I'm going to delete both of these. No more toolbar and scrubber. So the easiest and fastest and simplest way to get access to your bookshelf without actually building your toolbar in the way that we typically use when we're prototyping things is you go to your page, make sure nothing is selected and you're in the page inspector, click on triggers, add a new trigger. At the top you'll see that there's the page load, page unload and shake. So we select shake, we set the function um, and we set the function to bookshelf. So now you can create your document and when you shake the doc when you shape your shake your iPad then you will automatically jump back out to the bookshelf that's just a little tip on not having to go through the whole process to create um, a uh, 
full widget for a uh, scrubber in a toolbar. So I hope that this um, tutorial was very useful for you. And for more detailed information on widgets, toolbars, and scrubbers, you can go to support.origamiengine.com. Thank you.